to the party. After Black Friday, there was one massacre after another. Many people were killed. The end of the Shah's reign was near. One day, he made a declaration on TV. I understand your revolt. Together we will try to march towards democracy. After all he has done, quiet. <clears throat> For a few months, he actually did try. He tested a dozen prime ministers. A Freemason? That's not suitable. You remind them too much of my father. Too thin, too short, one-eyed. The more he tried democracy, the more his statues were torn down. Go a little more to the left. Then his effigy, effigy was burned. The people wanted only one thing, his departure. So finally, out, out, out. We will never forgive you, forget you, excuse me. The day he left, the country had the biggest celebration of its entire history. Jimmy Carter, the President of the United States, refused to give refuge to the exiled Shaw and his family. It looks like Carter has forgotten his friends. All that interests him is oil. It's Anwar al-Sadat al who will accept him in his country. Who's he? He's the President of Egypt. And why is he taking taking in the Shah? They've been friends for a long time. They both betrayed the countries of our region by making a pact with Israel. In any case, as long as there is oil in the Middle East, we will never have peace. Let's talk about something else. Let's enjoy our new freedom. Now that devil has left. Maybe Sudan welcomed the Shah because his first wife was Egyptian. Surely not. Politics and sentiment don't mix. After all this joy, a major misfortune took place. The schools, closed during this period, reopened, and <clears throat> children tear out all the photos of the Shah from your books. But she was the one who told us that the Shah was chosen by God. Teacher, she says that the Shah was chosen by God. Satrapi, you shouldn't say things like that. Stand in the corner. These strange phenomena were everywhere. Hello, neighbors. Hello. Hello. All those demonstrations were really tiring, but we finally succeeded. Look, a bullet almost hit my wife's cheek. Liberty is priceless. Oh. What nerve. She always had that nasty spot. If we weren't neighbors, he wouldn't have said these he wouldn't have said she's a martyr raised from the dead. It is not important. The battle was over for our parents, but not for us. My father says the Ramon's father was in the Savak, secret police of the Shah's regime. He killed a million people. A million? In the name of the dead million, we'll teach Ramon a good lesson. Ramin, a good lesson. I have an idea. My idea was to put nails between our fingers like American brass knuckles and to attack Ramin. Ramin, Ramin, come out of hiding. Don't be a wimp. But my mother arrived in the middle of our euphoria. So, kids, what are you up to? Why'd you found some nails? We're going to beat up Ramin. His father has killed a million people. So that's what you want? To nail Ramin? Get into the car. I have a better solution. <laughs> really? What's that? Where did you find the nails? In Dad's toolbox. What would you say if I nailed your ears to the wall? Wow, it would hurt a lot. I'll let it go this time. Don't do it again. But Mom, Ramin's father killed... I know. His father did it. But it's not Ramin's fault. Anyway, it is not for you and me to do justice. I'd even say we have to learn to forgive. 
Your father is a murderer, but it's not your fault, so I forgive you. He's not a murderer. Killed communists, and communists are evil. Mom, I spoke to Ramin. He says his father did the right thing in killing communists. My God, he repeats what they tell him. He will understand later. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. I really had the feeling of being someone really, really good.